go and have a chat. Okay, so um, I've just had a, a chat with a couple of guys there um, to my left now as we're looking at this bay. Um, they're both after the bream. Um, so unfortunately I'm not going to be able to show you around those two swims um, but we'll do that another time on another video so yeah I'll uh, keep the noise down and let them get on with it with a bit of peace and quiet so I do like it round here it's really nice um, it's almost um, quite secluded um, but if you look straight out ahead of you there um, about 25 yards out maybe a little bit more it's um, around 10 to 11 feet there and uh, it's quite a firm bottom yeah let's walk round to the bay see I like this swim but you're a little bit cut off here um, it's a lovely little bay and I always get the feeling there's going to be fish around by these boats might be worth putting a sonar out Vast expanse of water, it really is. Try around here. So we've got quite a quite a big piece of water to go out there. Um, but obviously because of these trees I'm not going to be able to really fish round to my left um, it's a bit tricky I think what I'll do is I'll go have a drive round to the one and two This is a real, uh, real cold wind and um, it's a northeasterly, which isn't ideal. See over there by that island really shallow three to four feet deep out there so if you look where the island is anywhere between the island itself and three or four meters off the island it's really shallow over there to the right of the island you can literally wade all the way over to that swim on the point there quite weird for a lake of this size Doesn't look like there's anybody here. So here you can see we've got the River Trent coming in. It's actually flowing to our right into this channel. And you're the lake. I think that's called Saddles All. That's huge. Absolutely huge. So yeah, River Trent. 
runs all the way back sorry all the way to the back of the lake there we just go down have a look see I fancy putting a rod over there could even drop one down here in this channel and one in that channel so one in the trent almost one in this channel to catch well to hopefully uh, intercept any traveling fish and one in this one over here which would be a plan um, do you know what I'm going to do that I don't feel like there's any better idea than that at the moment so that's what I'm going to do True carper style. But you don't break that tree, fatty. Do you see anything? It's dead dark, the water is. Need, need the sun on it, really. It's proper dark. I can't see anything. It's just black. So after much ponderous head scratching and walking around, um, Neil finally decided to set up on peg two and fish three familiar spots over the far tree line. Barlow fans, how are you? Barlow? Yeah, Barlow fans. Here for you, mate. That's Barlow fans. You're all your Barlow fans on YouTube. Yeah, right, okay. <laughs> oh, I thought they tuned in for you, personally. I kept saying the Woody Meister's going to be on live. Right, so what's the plan then, kid? All right, okay, my plan is um, I've got three rods out, and my first rod is on a solid bag. Okay, and it's fishing um, just off the snags, a rod length off, off the snags. Right. And then my second rod, which is the right hand rod, um, I'm fishing just off off that area um, with a stiff hinge rig with a uh, complex T. No, not a complex T. What have I said that for? A. <laughs> So I'll cut that. <laughs> so I, I'll cut that, kid. I'll cut that. Why did I say complex T? Because <laughs> you think my bait shit. So that's actually what you're using. Oh, you codex. He doesn't rate okay, my bait. So, him. <laughs> my right hand rod oh. is on a stiff hinge rig with the codex yellow pop up. Okay. And my left hand rod is. A bit further around on the far margin under the trees on a stiff hinge rig again with a pink squid 
pop up. So what are you laughing at? Did you write all that down or what? <laughs> it was what are you laughing in, at? It was impressive. What are you laughing at? No, no, it was impressive. Okay. Because I'd have had to jot that down because I wouldn't have remembered. Well, you're thick, aren't you? He's good. You're thick. Yeah. <laughs> thick brummy. Thick brummy. Go on, say it. So, uh, um, basically, I've spread out a load of spicy squid, 18 millers in the areas. Thought I heard the old throwing stick earlier. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's it. And I'm um, just sitting on my hands now waiting for, for a run. So, uh, let's hope it happens. Bit of luck. Bit of luck. And if we catch one, we'll uh, we'll update you in the night. And obviously, if you don't hear off us, we'll see you in the morning. What's happening? Just go in the water. It's nice to see one bosh out now, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, mate, <laughs> give us a bloody us a bit of a clue where a, they a, are. A clue and some sort of indication to what yeah. we got to do. Sometimes you just can rack your brains forever and almost and it seems like you just don't know what plan to to implement sort of thing. Mm. Look we're definitely gonna give the zigs a go there, a couple of a couple of rods on the zigs, I think. Okay, so it is half past five and um, to be honest with you it's been um, pretty bad bad as it gets um, there's been virtually zero activity today um, from this morning and uh, yeah it's been really difficult so what I've done is I think I might have mentioned it earlier I've actually gone well I went with um, two zigs and a chod um, I'll turn the camera around in a minute and I'll show you um, the Sun's behind me as you can see by that bright patch on the back of the bivvy and it's going directly towards well obviously the sun goes down in the west so it's facing east right into that little channel where the trent goes through so what I've done is I've put two zigs in there um, one is two feet below the surface and the other one is about 12 inches below the surface so uh, we'll see how that goes I'm going to give that another perhaps hour and a half or so until the sun loses its strength and then um, I'm going to put those back on the bottom where I was last night um, right over the other side on, in the margins um, so yeah I'll put two bottom baits across there that'll be my middle rod and my right rod and my left rod I'm actually fishing um, under a bush uh, I'm going to leave that there um, I've put lots of maize out on my middle rod and my right rod. Um, my thinking behind that was that while all the boat traffic was going through, causing the disturbance, I thought, well, I might as well put my bait boat out at the same time um, and put my boat bait out. So that's what I've done. So hopefully that's all the disturbance out of the way with now. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. I'll go next door in a bit and I'll have a chat with Neil, see what his plan is, um, see what he's up to. Um, so yeah, I'll wait till he's had his tea, or his supper, whatever he calls it, and then we'll have a chat with him. It's almost therapeutic, isn't it? Mm. Just you and your thoughts. Get away from everything. It is a sunny lake, though. It's a very hard lake, but it's a stunning lake. The thing with this place, which is I like about it, is it's unknown, isn't it? We just don't know yeah. how many's actually in here, what's in here. Mm. Um, 
you got the River Trent as a another uh, fly in the ointment, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You never know what's gone back up the Trent or what's come back into here. It's an unknown, isn't it, mate? Yeah. An very very difficult. Say last season, I had one fish out of what six sessions I did. I think it was something like that. Six 48-hour sessions. Um, lots and lots of bream in here, which is a nightmare. But mm. uh, hopefully we're slowly overcoming the not catching so many bream now. Um, tend to find that they're using the bigger baits. Seems to work. Didn't uh, you have some bream on 18 millers last well, year? Yeah, last year. It was, I think it was just um, there was a lot of big shoals of bream in front of me, I think. It was... Uh, bream King. Oh, yeah. Well, I've had the most thoroughly enjoyable session with Neil, albeit a fishless one. And Manor Park continues to be one of the most difficult waters I've fished. Um, but I will keep plugging away and eventually I know I'll crack it. <laughs>